Hi guys, Chris with Microsoft here with another exciting episode of what's new in Windows Server 2012. Uh, today we're going to go backwards just a little bit and uh, touch on a couple of things uh, dealing a little bit semi-quasi having to do with uh, Active Directory. We're going to talk about some of the changes in group policy. Uh, the reason I kind of uh, pushed that off to a later discussion was just so that we had a little bit of a mix-up for anybody who's getting sick and tired of hearing me talk about IAD. So there have been a few changes to uh, group policy management itself and then some changes to some of the group policies so one of the things that we now have the capability to do is actually to get kind of a, uh, a status report or a health report uh, right now I am not seeing any issues uh, we can see status details after having run a report let me uh, let me come in here and revert back my domain controller to a time before I've actually run the report. Uh, what you just saw was a uh, what, what it looks like after having uh, run a report once. So let's take a look at what uh, we start off with prior to that happening. So advanced settings, let's get this back up to a nice 800 by 600 so that YouTube viewers can view this a little easier. So going into server manager again and uh, He's still recovering from that snapshot there. Getting back on track and saying, what was that? Oh my gosh. Okay, so in group policy management, when you launch it up and you actually select your domain, you're going to see at first, under domains, contoso.com in this case, um, that there have uh, not been any status updates on this. No infrastructure status information exists for this domain. Clicking Detect Now will pull up problems. You see, Active Directory has the uh, uh, two different replication engines. Number one, it, it has a proprietary engine that it uses that is just a multi-master database with convergence and a, uh, a handful of, of uh, conflict resolution policies. And it moves around stuff inside of AD, like your password, for instance, and, and your phone number. Uh, the sysfall folder, however, so contoso.com, sysfall. This is a file uh, based replication. That is, because this was built on 2000, uh, 2012, it's actually using DFS replication, DFSR. Uh, if your domain was built in previous versions of Windows, uh, such as 2003 R2, you're going to be using FRS for replication. Uh, 2008 also, the same thing. So anyway, uh, this is the file-based portion of where your group policy exists. So a very small percentage of the overall bulk of group policy exists inside of Active Directory and replicates using Active Directory. Pete, things like who, uh, who gets applied what policies. But the actual policies themselves exist here. And so it's possible to have Active Directory replication doing just fine, and there not being any problems with Active Directory replication, uh, but there be issues with the sysfall piece, either FRS if it's in journal wrap, for instance, uh, or DFSR are not properly replicating, so you get kind of out of balance. So this is a health check. Now I've got one domain controller in this environment, so there's just not a whole heck of a lot to look at, but this is how you would come through and uh, do detect now, and it'll go out and run a policy. Another thing we could do here, let's uh, Let's create a little OU, so new organizational unit, and we'll call this one Win8. And then let's take a Windows 8 machine that we have and move it into the Win8 folder. And then let's go over here and refresh this and pull up the Win8. Right click and say let's create a new GPO and link it here. We'll call this Win8 Paul. Let's see, and so now we have a nice little group policy in here. And we'll talk about some of the new group policies that are also added in Windows 8 here in a minute. Not all of them, not an exhaustive list, but just some stuff. Um, but let's go ahead and just put something in, in here for fun. So if we go into policies and then we go into admin templates, let's look at uh, the, uh, what would be a good one to start off with? How about Windows components sync your settings? Since a uh, few people will be a little nervous about this one at first until they get used to it. So turning sync your settings and let's say let's not sync any of the Internet Explorer passwords. We could go ahead and enable do not sync and 
click OK. So we've got at least something in here for fun. Now what I can do is I can right click on that OU and I can say Group Policy Update. Now what this is going to do is it's going to tell me, hey, there's one computer that will be affected by this. Obviously, in most cases, there'll be more. Um, but I can go ahead and forcefully refresh those. And, you know, it probably would have hand helpful if I turned on that machine. Um, so, all right. So he has been told that the RPC call was uh, probably failed, you know, RPC, meaning, hey, I went out and tried to talk to that guy. And he just didn't want to talk to me. Um, let's go ahead and, oops, I didn't mean to close that. Let me f let this thing fail again so I can see the uh, group policy update while it's trying. I'm going to go out here to my Hyper-V server, and how about we power this guy on, <laughs> as that might be a little bit more useful. All right, so he's up, he's running. Let's make sure that he knows that. Make sure I haven't gotten it. All right, so I have RPC connectivity to it, so the remote procedure call failed miserably, basically. Um, so let's close that. Now that it's up and running, let's see if I can get this to go. Now I just restored this from Snapshot a second ago, so that could freak out the, uh, the secure channel between those two. But we'll see if we can get it Yeah, unavailable. But you can see you can actually uh, uh, go out and push large groups of updates to many different uh, remote computers um, just for fun. Let's, uh, let's restore that one to a snapshot. We might try that here just in a second. I think you get the idea of this whole thing. It would be nice to see at least once it not show RPC unavailable for uh, forcing that, uh, that update. So let's go, let's go talk about a few things. We looked at one of the policies that was uh, dealing with the synchronization of settings, so preferences, Windows settings, not Windows settings, not even preferences, policies, administrative templates. Just driving down the road on the road here. Uh, Windows component and the syncer settings. Obviously, that's something new in Windows 8. And sync your settings, so you can turn off all synchronization if you want, right here. Um, you could also just decide we will have no linked accounts. In a previous episode, we talked about linked accounts and what that means for you. So, if you want to block Microsoft accounts um, altogether, you're going to find that one under Windows settings. And then uh, that's going to be a local security policy under the security and uh, under the security uh, uh, section of the local policy. So we come under security and then go to security options um, right there. And we're going to see a block Microsoft accounts. I don't personally recommend this, but there's going to be some high security environments uh, or maybe some new. Um, uh, new to Windows 8 type uh, IT departments that don't understand what a, a linked account is yet and they haven't taken the time to really assess whether or not that's something they want to do. Um, you can enable users can't uh, add Microsoft accounts into this domain by simply checking this box. So that's uh, that's definitely new. I'm not going to turn that on in my lab because I don't personally think that's a good idea to do that because there's really nothing really critical about the synchronization. And I'm not going to go into that a whole lot of detail because uh, most of you all that have been following these episodes with me here have, uh, have already uh, watched the episode probably where we talked about that sort of thing and what can be synced and what can't and how it's not really all that uh, big a deal except in really super secure environments maybe. Some other really interesting ones that you might be interested you might want to take a look at are things like under the system maybe if I find the S's here uh, where am I at? I'm lost again. So I have to collapse these. I start getting lost just where I'm at. Aha! Now see system and then under system we might see a logon G-H-I-J-K. The logon has the ability to turn on a pin sign-on. Uh, some of your executives might want to have this enabled so that they just sign in with a pin on a touch screen. That's really big beneficial. However, a lot of people uh, will want to use the picture password. But if you're not ready for picture password, you can actually turn that on. It's on by default. 
So if you don't want people using picture password to sign in, which is kind of not as secure maybe as a password password, um, but a lot more secure than a pen for sure. And uh, one of the one of the reasons that we might do that is to give some of your users with touch screens the ability to have something easier than trying to use a touch screen to type in a password, which actually is kind of a pain if you've ever tried it. Uh, so that's that that's a new setting that might be of use or interest to you. Also, under Windows Components, and I know I'm jumping around, and that just is what it is. I'm thinking of these as I'm thinking of them. Um, the Credential User Interface has this uh, uh, new settings for the password reveal. If you're not familiar with the password reveal, let's see if I can do it here if I have to jump over to Client. So if I lock, and then um, if I want to Control, Delete, and log back on again, and I start typing my password, you see the little eyeball, SSW0RD? If I want to see if I've got that right or not, clicking on this will show me whether or not I got my password uh, in. So you could like, you know, sneaky look around you, see if anybody's looking over your shoulder, and then click that to make sure that you know, you've got your password right. That might not be, oops, it's expired. Uh, and I locked this thing too, so let's see. You pass it, change the price, it clicks OK, and return to the lock screen. Oh, this is uh, okay. So this might be something new we're finding as we go. I'm, I didn't naturally read the Dagum instructions here, so let's see what we need to do. So I said password, and I log in, and it says, "Hey, your password's expired. It has to be changed." I'm saying, "Okay, ah, there we go." So let's uh, W O R D two and P A S S W O R D two, and sign that sucker in. Change the password. Hey, yay! It's been changed. I need to obviously set that not to reset because I actually do use these uh, VMs for a couple of demos and trying to log in uh, with that. So uh, that's the new interface for that. We got to just see. So that's kind of cool. I love it when things happen live. So okay. So uh, let me think. What are some other interesting ones that you guys might want to know about? Oh, oh, I know one. Um, we didn't really talk about Windows to go in the what's new in um, Windows Server 2012 stuff because it's really more of a client thing. Uh, but just know that there is a new way to install Windows 8. You can put it on a flash drive. You can actually, if you've got a USB 3 and you've got a sufficient sized and, and class of flash media, uh, like maybe a class 10 or uh, maybe you've got like a 32 gig or, or higher, you could take your Windows image, your WIM file that you use for your default corporate image that maybe has already got Office and your uh, VPN software. You could actually install that out on a flash drive. Uh, there's some options that have been added in under it's under Windows Components. I want to say it's Portable OS, uh, L M N O Portable OS. There it is. So allowing hibernation is off by default. So if you wanted to turn it on so that you could hibernate a Windows to go. Why would this be handy? Okay, so if I uh, if I've got a flash drive, I can hand it out to multiple employees. That um, you know, in bad weather situations, I could actually just use their own home computer instead of having to give them a laptop. Uh, just give them an operating system on a flash drive, send them home, and uh, say, hey, boot up. It's got VPN software. It's got maybe the VoIP software on there. Uh, just grab a headset or make sure your speaker and uh, microphone are are turned up on your personal machine. Wakes, uh, you know, bring your own device or BYOD type scenarios, uh, hotel cubing scenarios, uh, troubleshooting type of uh, scenarios where you want to give your uh, you want to give your technicians some some tools that they could carry around with them from machine to machine. Hibernate's off by default. Um, default startup options so you can change the the way that the startup control works here. So we'll also have uh, disallow sleep and uh, C states. So. Uh, anyway, a couple of little options there if you're thinking about using the Windows to go. Now, Windows to go is only available for Windows Enterprise, Windows 8 Enterprise. The uh, Windows 8 Pro doesn't include Windows to go. So, I'm just letting you know that right up, right up front. You need to have an EA agreement or software assurance or something like that to get those kind of uh, licenses. Uh, some of you know that we've replaced the backup. The the old legacy backup uh, for Windows 8 is still there. Uh, it's it's a little bit more difficult to uh, to find. In fact, let me let me see. Oh, I'm not on Windows 8 right now, uh, so it's it's hard for me actually to pull that up. We'll do that in a client um, version of what's new in Windows 8 sometime down the road. I do have plans to eventually write a couple of episodes that we're going to do for that. But uh, to control the new file history is is right up here. So turning this off, you could enable a turn off on the file history so that uh, clients aren't actually using that. That is sort of our new strategy for Windows 8 and uh, backups. 
So another setting that I don't personally agree with, but um, I could understand why certain com IT departments might have to turn this on, uh, might be this one right here under System, the uh, intercommun Internet communica uh, in communica Communication Management. Uh, you're going to see this uh, Internet Communication Settings. There's this uh, Turn Off the Store. So if I'm going to turn that so you guys can see this just a little bit. Um, so the Turn Off Access to to the store this is a new policy so if you don't want your users let's say that um, you know you've disallowed the ability for somebody to actually create a connected account using a Microsoft account formerly Windows Live ID um, somebody could still open the store potentially and uh, go and download stuff from the store and then just enter their Windows Live ID manually that would allow them to put full screen applications on um, the the screen here they could get into the store they could go and uh, you know maybe put a little app on here so this would disable access to the store altogether um, let's see oh um, there's there's this one also under log on going back uh, to that uh, turn off the oh where's it at so there should be one in here the animation the the uh, the startup animation I'm sure it's in here and I'm just not seeing it it's uh, it's show first sign in in, in in animation right there. Sorry, <laughs> I could not find it. Uh, I was thinking it was turn off something, but it's actually show first uh, sign in um, animation. We could actually turn that off. So if you haven't built a Windows 8 machine yet, um, you, there's a kind of a neat little hey, you know, here's how you use Windows. Go to any quarter with the mouse, and we're getting things ready. And it's got kind of a pulsating screen that goes from purple to green to blue and stuff like that. This is uh, first sign on animation. You could turn that off. If, I wouldn't recommend it because your users that have never touched Windows 8 before may need just a quick little intro to tell them, hey, it's okay. You can still use your mouse very, very effectively in Windows 8 and Windows Server 2012. Um, you just need to know to remember to use the corners. Uh, so that's kind of their reminder for that. But if you need to turn it off, turn it off right there. Uh, so we've got a new one also under system uh, that, that has to do with customizing the Access Denied screen. So it's under access denied assistance right up here so um, we can enable access denied assistance on client for all file types we can customize the message for the error to allow you to you know put like uh, links and text in to tell the person hey you don't have access to this folder but here's something you could do about that uh, so that's kind of a neat new little setting that, that we have yeah so okay so this is uh this is a very small subset. There's there's a little over 175 new group policies that are only relevant to Windows Server 2012 and Windows 8 that are, that are new. Uh, and I don't want to sit here and go through all of them, and I don't think you'd want to sit through that either. We're already up to over 17 minutes, coming up on 18 minutes. So uh, those are some of the more interesting ones, so probably the ones that I, I imagine that uh, people will be using. So I'm going to stop there, and I'll uh, I'll put in my blog the, uh, the rest of those as a kind of quick reference and uh, which ones are new and where you'd find them, whether they're user or computer policies, and uh, uh, a little mini description of each of those two. So we'll, uh, we'll we'll rely on that to get you kind of a quick the video to get you a quick little intro to some of the changes in group policy, and then uh, we'll use the rest for uh, just as a text-based reference for you. So anyway, guys, this has been Chris with Microsoft, and as always, thanks for watching. If you did find anything about this useful or interesting to you, please take the second that it takes to give it a quick like and the link uh, that looks like a little thumbs I up icon below and uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel love to have a new uh, uh, little uh, uh, number pop up on my thing saying that I've got an extra subscriber that'd be great um, anyway my blog is at 9z.com real easy to remember it's just the last number and the last letter Dot com. Uh, so that's got links to my Facebook, my LinkedIn, my Twitter. And uh, so again, thanks a ton for listening, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.